continues in earnest as Miami piles up a 41-23 win today against Florida State. Saturday afternoon, college football continues on the Kansas Broadcasting System. Hello from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, everybody. As Wichita State is in the progress of engaging the Tulsa Golden Hurricane, I'm Bruce Hurd along with Dick Klein, and thus far, Dick, in this 3-0 Tulsa lead ball game, and we have just reached, as a matter of fact, the end of the first period. As we look at a beleaguered Brian McDonald, that pretty much tells the story for Wichita State offensively, as they have been absolutely anemic, unable to move the football on any type of scheme, passing or running. Bruce, that's true. It's been a very strong Tulsa defense. It's been Wichita State's inability to pick up the blitzes right now that has really hurt us. I'm sure if we check the stats for the first quarter, there's going to be negative yardage for Wichita State. Good sign, however, is that the Wichita State defense has been equal to the task. David Fuse with a 27-yard field goal, the difference in the contest at present, but the option attack of Steve Gage and the Hurricane thus far has not been that tricky for Wichita State. Well, we basically shut that down. Wichita State has done a good job with that. Uh, the only thing we have to really worry about right now is keeping that defense out on the field too long. Beginning of the second period of action, nice crowd on hand here at Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma, on the campus of the University of Tulsa. Beginning of the second period of action, and it'll start off with uh, David Armagas punt as the Shockers are backed up on their own 14-yard line. And thus far, I would hazard a guess and say that Wichita State offensively has negative yards as Brian McDonald has spent most of the afternoon sitting down and finding out up close and personal about the turf on the floor of Skelly Stadium. Defensively, however, Wichita State has been impressive here in the early going. Armagos to kick, deep to return. For Tulsa, Charles Wright, Tim Gort. Wright takes it, roaming to his left at the 50. Dives forward to the 44-yard line where he's finally knocked down by Sean Jackson and so Tulsa. We'll start their offense right there. The last time we saw Tulsa offensively, Marcus McVeigh, 5'10", 165-pound freshman, was in at quarterback. We are now seeing Steve Gage. Gage, the senior, of course, as we take a look at Ellison and Gil Johnson rounding out the backfield. That has been subject to change as Coach Don Morton in the second year year here at Tulsa has been moving folks around without caution Gage breaking up to the 40 35 to the 30 and finally is knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line by Randall Cooper but really the first time in this ball game that Steve Gage has been able to cut loose and pick up some yardage that's the first time Bruce and he did it with some excellent downfield blocking we, we do have a penalty flag on the play Mark Duckins, Tony Manning, and Doug Maxwell. Actually, we're seeing Mitchell Morris now at one of the tackles. And Doug Maxwell is up on the nose guard. Smith, Green, Allen, and Storm. With Jackson, Cooper, Batsyong, and Normor. The corners are what you've got to watch with Wichita State defensively. Sometimes they're good, sometimes they're bad. Randall Cooper and Sean Jackson. Here's the call. We're holding on the offense. Still first down. Referee Tommy Taylor with the call, so Tulsa will back it up, and it'll be a first and 20 situation. Three to nothing early in the second period. Tulsa's had success moving the ball off tackle in the first quarter, Bruce, and that's because we really spread the defense out, Wichita State. Ellison and Johnson in the backfield. John Jackson on the stop. The play is stopped for no yards. Sean did a great job of just staying at home with that one. That's the way the option has to be played. Shocker down on the field as we take another look. Gil Johnson, just a 5'7", 179-pound freshman. And Sean Jackson was not fooled on that play at all. Good help from Mark Duckins, Jimmy Storm, and others. Tony Manning as well on the ground right now. As you can see, Tulsa comes in rather prolific on offense, especially on the ground, eighth in the nation. They are five and three on the season, four and one at home. This is their final home game of the season. Don Morton in his second year as head coach of the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 11 and eight here at Tulsa. He is 68 and 23 overall. Won an NCAA Division II championship at North Dakota State. Bruce, this is probably the biggest rivalry Wichita State has. This, I believe, is the 46th meeting of these two teams and a continuous meeting since 1945. Unfortunately, Tulsa has the upper hand at 31 wins against only 13 losses in one tie. Well, it wasn't too long ago, really, Dick, that these two programs were on an even keel, but they have since gone in opposite directions. Tulsa, one of the fine 
second level independence in the country, meaning certainly not on a par with Miami and Penn State and others, but a very fine football team in their own right. Gage looking to pass on second and 20. He's got a man deep and a man open. Eric Brown with the catch. And he is going to break free and into the end zone for a touchdown as Derek Ritchie, the freshman who has been exploited early and often on the season, gets beat on this play. And Eric Brown went into the, went into the touchdown. And so quickly, Tulsa is up 9-0. Eric Brown was wide open on that play. Pretty good for 55 yards as we take another look. And Gage showed that he can air the ball out on this play a little bit. Had plenty of time. Brown was open all the way behind Richie as they caught the shocks in a man-to-man. -man and Richie simply did not wrap up the 180-pound fleet of foot receiver. And Eric Brown goes prancing into the end zone. David Fusen for the extra point. Kick is good. So with 14 minutes and four seconds left here in the first half from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, the hurricane have popped out ahead, 10 to nothing. Hey, says here ethanol gasoline keeps your car engine clean. Yes, I know. So it runs better. Right. And it says your car starts better, gets better mileage, too. Yeah, I know all about it. You do? Sure. We put about 10 million miles a year on our cars, and it's ethanol for us every drop of the way. Nebraska State Troopers receive superior performance from ethanol. Get the facts right to this address. Ethanol works. On Wednesday, the 19th, the Schofield Auto Dealers are presenting the biggest new car showing ever. Your chance to check out the finest selection of new cars in town and win an NCL Caribbean Cruise for two, courtesy of the Cruise Connection. Come prepared to buy because all Schofield cars will be priced to sell and immediate financing will be available. New cars, great deals, and on-the-spot financing all under one roof at the Schofield Auto Dealers new car showing. Wednesday, the 19th, 6.30 to 10 p.m. at the Beach Activity Center. There's a look at Wes Anderson, who already has one catch on the afternoon. Good for a first down. Had three last week and was very impressive in subbing for Anthony Hardy. Kickoff comes to David Smith at the 10. Search to the 20, and he's going to be knocked down just outside the 25-yard line. Down near the 27-yard line. And that's where Wichita State will start on offense. Smiley Omar, correct that? On the return. 55 yards, they go up deep. Steve Gage to Eric Brown for the touchdown. And there you see at the tail of the tape, 10 to nothing, Tulsa up on the shot. Chris, Wichita State has the ability to stay with this team, but they can't get in a hole early like they're doing right now. Uh, when I tell you offensively, they have not been able to move. It is no exaggeration. They have, to their credit, one first down. That on the pass of 10 yards from Brian McDonald to Wes Anderson. Other than that, it has been nothing. Eric Gilstrap in the ball game breaks a tackle and actually spurts forth to about the 26, 27 yard line before he's knocked down by a host of blue shirted Golden Hurricane. Gilstrap, the freshman of Dallas, Texas. 5'11, 194 pounds. Kenny Gordon finally made the stop. It'll bring up a second down and eight. The offensive line has done a good job of getting the hole open right away. Unfortunately, the backs just haven't gotten there quick enough. This is a quick Tulsa defense. As you can see, Brian, not a model of proficiency early. Second and eight. With time, McDonald scrambling across the 30, finally knocked down at the 32. A pickup of about five on the play. Knocked down by David Haynes. Second leading tackler for this Tulsa. What? Picks up four yards. Tulsa is making no bones about coming with a rush on a situation like this, Bruce. Shockers are going to have to set up real quick and get rid of the ball real fast on these blitzes. Shocks thus far in the ball game, 0 for 5 and third down conversions. They face just such a situation at present at the 32-yard line. Split backfield to go from the pro set. Spreading it out, Ewan comes back into the near side in motion. McDonald back to pass. Is rushed. Velasco Smith has nowhere to go as David Haynes read the play perfectly, and we will see David Armagost yet again as the Shockers unable to get it going offensively here. Brian McDonald, picture of frustration. 
has broken Sam zero. Atkins' Wichita Correct. State career completions record of 336. However, that was certainly not a great pass on which to have accomplished such a feat. Still, congratulations to the senior out of Bashan in St. Louis. Dave Armagas to boot it away. Charles Wright and Tim Gordon are back deep. This is Gordon. And he is knocked out of bounds, but Tulsa will start with good field position at their own 44-yard line. The big play has hurt Wichita State really all season long, though, Dick. You look at the ball game last week against Cincinnati, and the difference between winning and losing, really three or four big plays that Wichita State wasn't able to convert, and that Cincinnati was, and such has been the case early in this ball game. Tulsa leading by 10. Steve Gates tries the option, pitches it back to the other man. Eric Brown coming the other way, has all sorts of room and lots of humanity in front of him. Cuts it back up to the 30. He's breaking free to the 25. One man can get him. That's Chris Badsyong, and he finally knocked him down on him and out of bounds with some help from Derek Ritchie at about the three-yard line. But they've been running that little reverse play off the option look with success in this ballgame. That's the second time we've seen it. Actually, the third, the second time that they've handed it off. 51 yards on the play, and Eric Brown was never really touched until Chris Batsyong finally got a hand on it. Bruce, someone's got to stay at home on that play, and we're failing to do that. That play will be there all day long if we continue defensing it just that way. So first and goal from the four. Batsyong credited with the tackle. Derek Ritchie finished him off. Gage calling the signals with two tight ends set. Man in motion to the near side. Gage keeps to the one-yard line where he is stopped by Clint Normore. There's Don Morton, head coach of the Golden Hurricane. Tight, tight right 16 feet. Tight right 16 feet. That's what we're going to see. I would imagine that means we're going to see Gage coming down the right-hand side, going to the wide side of the field. Second and goal, Tulsa looking to put their 16th point on the board. So the 16 keeper, that's the play, remember it. Gage trying the right side and in for the touchdown and quickly Tulsa is up. 16 to nothing and two big plays have really hurt Wichita State early in the ball game. You can't give Steve Gage any type of room, he'll kill you. And right here he had all sorts of daylight Running unaccompanied into the end zone, and Tulsa up quickly on Wichita State. 10-37 left in the first half of action. Houston to kick the extra point, trying to add his fifth point of the day. Brown with the snap, the kick is up, and the kick is good. So there's a big blue wave approaching on the horizon, and Wichita State's got to get the floodgates up. It's 17 to nothing. They're down. 10-37 left in the first half. Wes Anderson takes the kickoff on the five, out across the 20, cuts it up to the 25, and falls just short of the 30-yard line, down at the 29, and that is where Wichita State will start with now 10 and a half minutes left in the second period. Offensively, it has been a nightmare this far, Dick Klein. What are we looking for from Wichita State to start doing? Mm -hmm. That much, huh? Not much. <laughs> Not much at all. Tulsa has definitely had the advantage on field position. We haven't punted the ball. Uh, inside their 40 yet. We've done that five times, I believe. First and 10, Wichita State from the split backfield. Brian McDonald calling the signal. Eric Gilstrap, the freshman, good running across the 30-yard line and dives forward to about the 33. That's where they'll mark his forward progress. Chris Codman on the stop for Tulsa. Eric just really comes on strong when he gets in that game. He's with somebody that really gives you all the effort he possibly can and then some. Thus far, he is getting the start ahead of Stan Walmart. Second and long six for Wichita State. Credit Gilstrap with four on the first carry. From the eye, they'll go. Pewin in the slot to the left with Hardy split. Second man through, Velasco Smith drives across the 35. Helmets go rolling, as does Velasco to the 39. They'll mark it just shy of the 39. And just shy of the first down as well. It'll bring a third and one. Again, Bruce, the hole was there early. I don't want to sound negative when I say this, but Velasco seems to be hesitating a little bit today. 
He slipped on several occasions and kind of stuttered up to the line a few times. Very poor quality of turf we're playing on here at the floor of Skelly Stadium. Very threadbare and thus slippery. Shocks looking for their first third down conversion of the ball game. They are 0 for 6 thus far. Velasco Smith is going to get it and get more. Trying to get to the outside and is finally knocked down by the last man, Charles Wright. Otherwise, he's got room to roam along the sidelines. Good burst of speed by Velasco Smith, the 12th the leading rusher per game in the country. Maybe I should talk a little more negative about Velasco if it turns into those results. It was an outstanding run. Gets to the corner very quickly, and then it's just all out speed trying to break it to the sideline. But Charles Wright knocked him out of bounds and thus avoided what could have been a very large gain indeed for Wichita State. It's been tough going for Velasco early. He peeled off a run right there of about nine yards, but thus far eight carries for 19 yards. Shock's trying to punch it into Tulsa territory, and they do so. Driving it in across the 50 into the 49-yard line before he's stopped by Earl Johnson as Eric Gilstrap. There's something we need to see more of, a quick opener and get to the line of scrimmage right away, Bruce. Wichita State has the ability to control that offensive line. As Dick pointed out, the holes have been there early. You see Gilstrap's production thus far on the afternoon. Second and five for Brian McDonald. From the eye. Gilstrap and Velasco Smith. This is Velasco, and he is met in a hurry by Donnie D and a host of others along the interior of the Tulsa defensive line. This defense is only giving up 186 yards per game rushing. And as you can see, they are tough in the interior. This is the biggest difference between the Cincinnati team that played Wichita State last week and the Tulsa team that's on this field today. That off the defensive line for Tulsa is a much better line than Cincinnati's. Much more active and they do a lot of different things from the linebacking position as you will see Buford, Haynes and Warren blitzing quite a bit as we have thus far this ball game. McDonald flush from the pocket throws it up and gets it out of bounds intended for Wes Anderson along the far side but he was just trying to get rid of that one. Donald is down and injured on the play. And he is slow getting up as Doug Vandersee, the head trainer of Wichita State, is out to attend to the senior. David Cruz, of course, would be the backup. Brian McDonald, the all-time career leader in completions for Wichita State, needed three going into the ball game today and has done that. He's already the career touchdown passing leader with 30. A concerned Ron Chismar. And has the most career attempts now for Wichita State passers. So into the record books further goes Brian McDonald today. Although at this point his medical status is concerned. He just joined us. Wichita State trailed three to nothing at the end of one period and since then Tulsa has put up 14 on them on two big touchdowns coming within about three the minutes of each other like the the and lead at this point by a score of 17 to nothing Bruce Hurdle and Dick Bryan on the Kansas broadcasting system and glad to have you along on this Saturday afternoon 41 to 23 Miami of Florida beat Florida State in that ball game they trailed in that contest 23 to 20 also today, Colorado over Oklahoma State, 24 to 14. Arkansas leads Rice, 24 to 7. That game in the second period in the Southwest Conference. Dave Armagas back to punt it away on a fourth and long five for Wichita State. That ball will go sailing at the one. Bounces in the air. If the Shocks can cover it, and they do, a nice job down there covering on the play by Tom Schmerich. And for a change, just excellent field position for the Wichita State defense. That was a 50-yard punt. And fortunately for Wichita State, it stayed within the one-yard line. Then Schmerich with the cover at the one-yard line. As Armagas sets it down, and that is where Tulsa will start. So the first positive thing of the afternoon has happened to Wichita State. Bruce, we're going back to the situation we talked about before. We've got Wichita State has Tulsa exactly where they want them right now. If the defense can play up to their potential, we'll get the ball back in good field position. Ellison engaged the two backs. Gage keeping across the five and to the nine yard line. So a pickup of about seven on the play for quarterback Steve Gage before Chris Badsion, the strong safety, knocked him down. Dick, defensively, what's the rule against the option? What do you like to do? 
Well, you know, you have to have somebody playing that quarterback constantly. Wichita State is too tentative on the quarterback. There are times even when he didn't carry the ball that we just let him go. Wichita State does not want to let that quarterback go untouched when he's running that option. You've got to turn him back up the field, and you can't let him get to the sideline. Steve Gage has got speed to burn. Let's run for 371 yards. Second man through is Kenny Leary, stopped by Chris Batsion, not before Tulsa gets a first down, and so quickly the Hurricane have dug themselves out of a hole. They started at their own one-yard line, and you can see the line play right there. Good seal by the interior line, and Lee had room to run before Batsion knocked him down at the 16. If you'll notice the splits on Tulsa's offensive line, they've kind of taken wide splits. Wichita State has moved out with those splits and left a lot of running room in the middle. Balls on the... On the turf, it's going to be picked up, and it will not be advanced as Alan Smith came up with a gift. But the Shockers have come up with a big turnover at the four-yard line as Kenny Lee was unable to handle the pitch. And kind of being in the right place at the right time, Alan Smith says, I don't know, look in the other pocket. Comes up with the turnover. And if Wichita State intends to get back in this ballgame in any way, this is the time they have to do it. Now we're going to see David Cruz at quarterback. 6'5", 212 pound sophomore. As Brian McDonald down with an injury and we will check on his status and relay that as the information becomes available. I can't see Brian right now on the sideline. He's an awfully tough kid. Has played in pain throughout the season but at this point it's David Cruz out of Yorkville, Illinois. On first down, gives it to Velasco, diving to the two-yard line before he is whistled dead. And it'll bring a second and goal for Wichita State, looking to get on the board with 6.29 remaining in the second period. Trailing 17 to nothing in the ballgame. Recipients of a turnover moments ago. And now trying to capitalize. Guys up front, Pratt, Bolts, Panther, Leedy, and Robbins. Jack Owens at tight end as they run from the slot. Velasco to the left side. Ball's on the ground and Pulse comes up with it. Lack of execution by Wichita State. David Haynes jumps on it. And so the Shockers cough it right back up. Bruce, not only lack of execution, but I really have to judge that play that was called right there. This is the time when you want to drive the ball right at people. Wichita State needs to hand the ball off, a quick opener right up the middle. Well, they didn't do that. And David Haynes jumps on it. He has been active thus far in the ball game. David Cruz lamenting that particular play as the Sharks come up empty. And that is a big opportunity gone by the boards. And boy, I'll tell you, against a club like Tulsa, chances like that don't come up too often. Now Steve Gage coming back on first down. Dive forward to the 15-yard line, a pickup of six. Before Jimmy Storm and Chris Batsion combined and knock him down. We had talked about playing the option just a little bit uh, before that play, and you can see again Wichita State got caught inside. There's just too much room for them to run outside. Those numbers extremely indicative of the difference between these two clubs, at least through this point in the first half. 529 of which remains. Gage coming to the near side. Gives it to the second man. Driving through into the open field is Gil Johnson before Clint Normore and Derek Ritchie knock him down. Another first down for the Golden Hurricane. Clint and Derek have to be leading tacklers right now in this game, and that's a bad sign when the secondary is forced to make all the tackles. Johnson knocked down at the 29-yard line. He had not played previous to this ball game for Tulsa, but thus far has been Impressive in carrying the football. From the 29 for the Golden Hurricane. Gage options left. Ellison knocked down after a gain of two. Mark Duckins and Mitchell Morris on the play. Ellison coming in five of eight times that Tulsa's played on the season. He has gained 100 yards or more. His big effort, 184 yards in the upset over Oklahoma State. As Tulsa 5-3 and three on the season beat their cross-state rivals 27-23 in front of a sellout crowd right here in Scully Stadium. Gage on second down, looking across the middle, had a man. But it sailed over the head. 
of Kenny Lee on the flare. And it'll bring third and six for the Hurricane. Bruce, I'll have to apologize to the audience at this time right now for some hesitancy maybe in the booth, but you folks don't realize we are getting bombarded by wasps up here. <laughs> I feel like Brian McDonald <laughs> under a Tulsa rush. We're looking for that cold front to come <laughs> scathing through here. Third down, big play, Gage pitches, cutting it back up. And for the first down and more is Kenny Lee, and he stopped just shy of midfield. Shockers had the play defense. Randall Cooper and Clint Normore made the stop, but they were unable to stop. Alan Smith is there as well. But look at the execution of Tulsa right here, and in particular, a fine running by the ball carrier, Kenny Lee, just a freshman, cutting back up against the grain, going against the flow, and finding the open space. That time we did an excellent job of handling the quarterback and making him force the pitch. Unfortunately, we didn't have anybody else out there. Gage back to pass on first down, looking long, has a man open and just overthrows Ronnie Kelly. No more. Cooper on the play defensively as Steve Gage takes a second look. He is not the most prolific of passers, only 36 of 87 coming in. He has thrown 10 interceptions. Only 41%, so he is much more of a threat holding on to the football than releasing it. Second and 10, just shy of the 50. Tulsa leading 17 to nothing. The Shockers just squandered a tremendous opportunity at the Tulsa goal line. Here's the reverse again. Brown with room at the 50. He's to the 40. Pops the ball up, and Clinton Normore has come up with it. And the Shockers have yet another turnover. They're second in the ball game, and again, it's a question of being in the right place at the right time. Randall Cooper came up with the hit. Normar came up with the football. That's the third time the Shockers have seen that reverse. It's worked three times. Fortunately, at the end of the play, we got the turnover. So Wichita State will start offensively again. Ron Chismar trying to figure out this Tulsa defense. Thus far, they have picked up two yards of total offense. David Cruz will continue at quarterback as Brian McDonald is out with an early injury being attended to on the Wichita State sideline. David Smith in a tailback for the Shockers. In front of him, Eric Gilstrap. And it's going to be procedure against Wichita State or motion. Looks like the right side of the line got off a little too quickly. Here's the call. And it's procedure against the Shockers. Dead ball, illegal procedure against the offense. First down. Thank you. It has not been a tidy football game to this point. First and 15 for David Cruz in the white shirted shocks, trailing by 17. Tulsa showing stunt. Second man through, David Smith running across the 20 or 35 to the 36 yard line before Tony Buford knocked him down. Well, I tell you, I'm impressed with the quickness of this Tulsa defense. They are not particularly large, but they can move it around an awful lot. They have tremendous speed in that front line. We're gonna have to get to the holes just a lot sooner, like we said before. I'd like to see David in this situation just drop back and throw the ball. Second and 11, he may be forced to in this situation, and they go from the pro set. And instead, they hand it off to David Smith. Good yards across the 40 to the 50. Stumbling to the 45. Still on his feet to the 40. And finally knocked down at the 37-yard line. They'll mark it at the 38. David Smith out of Dallas San Francisco Junior College before Richie Stevenson finally knocked him down. But a big gain by David Smith. And the best effort by Wichita State offensively on the day is it's good for 26 yards. 26 yards. I believe Tulsa was thinking the same way I was thinking on that play, and fortunately, what we did worked for us. Ron Chismar crosses them up. Remember, Chiz calls each and every play from the sideline. First and 10 from the 38. Wichita State on the move. Smith again, cutting back against the grain, and that time he's knocked down after a gain of two. Doug Deshero on the stop initially, and a bunch of other folks were there to get their licks in. Velasco Smith 
started the football game. Now we're seeing David Smith in his stead. Keep in mind the two of those from the tailback position combined for some 230 yards rushing last week in the losing cause against Cincinnati. Second and eight for the Sharks, trailing by 17. Inside Tulsa territory at the 36. From the eye formation, slot to the left. Smith again going against the green. He's got room to the 30, to the 20, to the 15 yard line. Richie Stevenson on the stop along with Charles Wright. But good yardage again for the Shockers. First, that time the offensive line just did a great job opening the blocks and maintaining their blocks. And by doing that, it afforded Smith the opportunity to gain that 20 yards. So David Smith has picked up some 50 yards in his last three carries. His numbers on the day shown there. Stan Walmeyer in the backfield now. Rominger and Hardy split to the left in the slot. Flags all over everywhere. And we'll wait on the call. Legal procedure against Wichita. And again, Wichita State having problems executing. But boy, I'll tell you, it's very important they put some points on the board right now. You can't come up empty with this type of movement and only a minute 53 left in the first half. Illegal snap on the offense. First down. These mistakes that Wichita State uh, is coming up with right now are things you'd expect to see first part of the year. It's a little bit too late to see those right now. Realize you do have a new quarterback in there. That might make some difference. First and 15. The Shocks can pick up a first down at the six-yard line. David Smith at the 20, and he's not going anywhere this time. Conservative play calling on first down with Tony Buford making the stop. And off goes to David Smith. Daniel and there's an injury on Buford. the play, and it appears that Smith is down and will stay down. Brian McDonald has has gone out already with an injury. And, your player and now Wichita David Smith, who David has been Smith, the lone two. bright spot for the Shockers the shot offensively. Of the country, a final. It's Texas Tech. Defeats Texas 23. We're going to break away. It's 17 to nothing. A minute and a half. Left. David Smith went off under his own power. Second and 14 for Wichita State. David Cruz in for the injured Brian McDonald on the ground of Velasco Smith. And he'll pick up yardage to about the 16 yard line, where it'll bring up a third down for Ron Chismar and the Shockers. Velasco Smith takes the handoff on the draw play. It was good to see David walk off the field that time for the Shockers and uh, everybody at home. I believe he just had the wind knocked out of him. And he is back on the field even as we speak. Some other finals. Texas Tech beat Texas today in a bit of a surprise. 23 to 7. Oklahoma leads KU 14 to nothing in the second. Expect that to get a lot worse. Same with Nebraska and Kansas State. 17 to nothing in the second. And the Shocks are going to call a timeout. You see their lack of proficiency on third down. Tulsa not much better. But Ron Chismar is going to talk about it, along with a host of others. It's 17 to nothing. There's 43 ticks of the clock left in the first half. Remember when you outgrew your piggy bank? Back to action. David Cruz pass to Ron Rominger. Knocked down on the play by Michael Greer. And so we will see Brad Fleeman as the Shocks will try to put three on the board before time ticks away in the first half, 38 seconds of which are remaining. Ron Rominger broken up by the hurricane by number 90, Michael Greer. So for Fleeman, it'll be a kick of 33 yards. Hash mark right. Dave Armagas to hold. Fleeman 6 of 13 on the season. Longest of 48 yards. This kick is up. And it's good. So the Shocks get on the board with three. I'll tell you, folks, it should be more. Instead, it's 17 to 3. back up on a fumble pitch from David Cruz to Velasco Smith and came up empty. Otherwise, we have ourselves a ball game. As it is, a 14-point deficit, but the Shockers starting to swing the tide back a little bit in their favor. Again, it's the confidence level we've talked about in games before. The Shockers just have to believe they can move the ball. Fleeman will kick it off. And he'll go deep. In the air, it comes down to Ronnie Kelly at the five-yard line. And he is knocked down across the 20-yard line by Chris Holt. So Brad Fleeman does his job, and we will see Steve Gage yet one more time. 28 seconds left. 
Both teams have two timeouts remaining. Keep in mind that Tulsa has seen their two touchdowns come by virtue of the big play, so running out the clock at this point in time is not necessarily a lot. Ellison. And we're going to get 15 more on him, or perhaps five on an inadvertent face mask. Randall Cooper made the stop. And you'll see the face mask clearly on the replay. Face masking is the indication against Wichita. There it was. Kirk Allen reached up there, didn't mean to, but he got him anyway. We have a face mask violation against the defense. Five yard penalty, first down. So the call is inadvertent and with 23 seconds left. And ticking, Tulsa has it now. First down at their own 37 yard line. Intentional face mask is whistled for 15 in college football, inadvertent. Face mask is good for five and a first down. Here comes the reverse again. Eric Brown's got room outside, no contain for the Shockers. Kirk Allen, though, with a tremendous man-to-man -man effort, sheds his blocker and makes the tackle. And what a fine defensive effort by Kirk Allen on that play, as it looked like Eric Brown would have room to run. Utah State will be kicking it away to open the second, generating some enthusiasm, as Wichita State will kick it off to begin the second half of action. Very important for the Shockers defensively, and Ron Chismar knows that as he stalks the sideline on the far side of the field. Very important for Wichita State to come out and establish themselves defensively right here. Tulsa can't get anything too quickly on them. The defense has done a good job for Wichita State when they haven't given up the field position we've given up in the first half because of punting. We, we haven't really let Tulsa break for any long plays Save for the save, save for, for the reverses two or and the three. long pass, right? <laughs> well, that's and that's been important because Tulsa has tried to exploit that perceived weakness in the Wichita State defense, and they have been successful in doing it a couple of times. But other than that, the Shockers have pretty much shut Tulsa down. Still, they trail by a score of 17 to three, and make no mistake about it, it has been to this point a one-sided football game. Brad Fleeman will kick it away, and the Shocks will take the win to open the third period of action, and it is gusting. Fortunately for us in the booth, the wind has driven away the wasps. And they were out in force. I'm not talking one or two, I'm talking droves. They had to come up from Texas. They were awfully big. Yeah, but in Texas, they'd only be mosquitoes. Oh, right? All right. Fleeman to drill it away. Ronnie Kelly. Flanked by two to the left and right. Three deep for Tulsa. Eric Brown is back there to the near side. And Charles Wright. Fleeman's kick hit a little fat, and it'll come down about the two yard line. Eric Brown with it, running room to the left. He's got a hole, driving to the 25, stiff arming to the 35, and knocked down by Randall Cooper. So Brad Fleeman got it to the two. But Eric Brown, who is piling up a ton of total yards in this ball game, ran it back out to the 35. And so that is where Steve Gage will start the offense for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. Coming in 5-3-0 and on the season with wins against Oklahoma State, a loss against Arkansas. They beat Houston, Cal State Fullerton on national television, coming off a big 42-6 win over Central Michigan. Derek Ellison at the 40, cutting to the 45-50. He's got open turf. Randall Cooper trying to run him down and finally does at the five-yard line. Derek Ellison, and what were we just talking about? The Shockers trying to guard against the big play early, and Derek Ellison makes him pay up the middle for 61 yards, and Tulsa is knocking on the door. The Shockers are doing a poor job. If you'll notice on the replay, there's an awful lot of arm tackles. There's a little effort, it looks like, being put out right here. Now the Shocks paid for being tentative on the first play from scrimmage by Derek Ellison, who piles it up for 61 yards. 
Now Steve Gage has six to go. Check it, four to go for the six. On the option, and he's in. I tell you, it's not hard to figure the keys to this ball game. You can talk about them all you want, but it's a question of moving the X's and O's in the right place. And this time, the Shockers did not read the option. And Steve Gage just went into the end zone unscathed. Two plays into the second half, and you're down 23 to 3. Tulsa has done an excellent job of scouting Wichita State. And the results are obvious. Here's with the extra point. And that is practically automatic. He has missed but one this season. And so now it's a 24 to 3 ball game as Wichita State slow to wake up here in the second half. Kick the ball off. Eddie Hawkins, a reserve tight end, made the play as the wind really held that ball up. And so the Shockers, as a result, will get pretty good field position as they'll start it from their own 34-yard line. And Ron Chismar, what are you going to do? We're seeing Brian McDonald again at quarterback. To open the second half for Wichita State, trailing by 21 points in the ballgame. David Smith in at the tailback position in front of Stan Walmeyer, and Walmeyer carries it to the 35. There's a fumble on the play, but the Shocks recover. Pick up about a half a yard. Well, I'll tell you, the offensive philosophy simply has got to change as you take a look at this Tulsa scoring drive. I don't think you're going to run the ball on this club and score 21 to get back in it. Gonna, Wichita State will have to put the ball in the air and put it in the air right away. Keep in mind they have the win now for the next 13 minutes and 42 seconds, after which they'll be going headlong into it in the fourth period. Second man through, David Smith. Sidesteps a man at the 35, and he's finally whistled down at about the 37-yard line, make it the 38. David Haynes, who has just been a defensive mainstay for this Tulsa defense on the stop and so it'll bring up a third down and long six make it seven for Wichita State so two running plays nets them three yards and so Brian McDonald now facing the nickel on third and long he went back in motion on the far side McDonald straight drop back flush from the pocket now he's going to run it Nope, now he's going to throw it. And it's knocked away incomplete. Actually overthrew a man that looked to be open. David Smith was wide open on the far side of the field with the scramble. Just never had a chance to see him. Brian dipped in like he was going to run, then ended up throwing it. Shocks are one for ten on third down conversions, and Brian not much more success throwing the football, only three for 11, and David Armagost. Right We'll punt it away. Should get a good one off. He's got the win. Charles Wright taking it at the 20. He's got a wall. He's got room to the 30, 35. And he's finally knocked down there by Sean Jackson. Tulsa special teams have done an excellent job all day long, Bruce. They really have. 43 yards on the punt. 43 yard kick. Ball will be placed at the 18 yard return, line. so you figure out the net. 18 yards on the return. Don't ask me, I didn't take any of that in school. 25, is that right? Scott Shoemaker, our spotter, tells me. Gage hands off. First man through to Gil Johnson. And Tulsa continues to find gaping holes. Up front, Jimmy Storm finally knocks him down. Haven't heard a lot from the 5'11", 222-pound junior today, but he's in on that tackle. Tulsa cruising with a 24-3 lead, 12-14, and ticking away in the third period. Take a good look right here, Bruce, at how far apart the Tulsa linemen are. Big splits. Gage looking across the middle. The man was absolutely scot-free in the Shocker secondary. Clint Normore and Chris Batsyong taking a good long look at each other and trying to figure out what went awry because breaking free and wide open was Ronnie Kelly and Steve Gage simply overthrew him. 
Oh boy. Correction on the final score we gave earlier. Uh, huh. Texas Tech did defeat Texas. The score was Texas Tech 23, Texas 21. There you see Tulsa's proficiency on third down. Gage trying the right side on the option across the 50 to the 48. More than enough for the first down. Gage keeps around the right side, picks up a Tulsa first down. Texas Tech Inside ended up beating Texas by a final of 23 to 21. They had led in that ball game 23 to 7. Oklahoma leads Kansas in the second 20 to nothing and at the half. Texas A&M leads SMU 14 to seven. That's at the intermission. First and 10 on the Shockers 48. Steve Gage rolling to his left. Has a man in the flat. Wide open and making the play is Eric Harrison. In front of Derek Ritchie, who knocked him out of bounds. Again, Tulsa is doing a beautiful job at mixing up their offense. Gage delivers this ball very nicely, coming right at you. Harrison pops out for the reception. And another Tulsa first down as Richie late to make the stop. Tulsa starting to flex their muscle just a little bit and controlling the line of scrimmage. Kelly in motion. First man through is Gil Johnson. Across the 30, down to about the 28. Tulsa right now in their ball control mold. Nothing too long on the passing game, although they did go up for the big touch against with Ronnie Kelly deep, and the pass was overthrown. But other than that, the short passing game, keeping the ball between the hash marks at the running game and working the clock down. They're driving into a stiff north wind. Gil Johnson's numbers reflected there. Seven carries, 39 yards in motion. Goes Eric Brown. Gage will try the right side. Gives it to Johnson again. He's knocked down by Mark Duckins and Alan Smith making the initial contact. Kirk Allen there as well. Pick up of a couple for Johnson. Every down is a critical situation right now for the Wichita State defense. This is one I'm sure the Shockers would like to have. Big third down play right here. Maybe out of field goal range with the win. Gage rolling out. Throws it, and it's incomplete. Good coverage on the play by Randall Cooper. Ball is intended for Ronnie Keller. And that'll bring a fourth down situation, and we will probably see David Fuse or Willie. Nope, they're going to go for the first down. So Don Morton with confidence in his offense. He's got four yards to pick up, and they're going for it on fourth down. The Shockers held earlier in the ball game in a similar situation, but obviously with a 21-point lead, playing a little less from the hip. Gage on the option on the right side, and he stopped quickly on the play by Mark Duckins, the big kid out of Wichita North. And so the Shockers have held on fourth down, and Wichita State will take over on downs. Nice job by Mark Duckins as he read the option all the way. Time and time again, Mark has had that ability to make the big play. This is a good example of just what he's capable of doing. So as Brian McDonald and the Wichita State offense trots onto the field for yet another try, time is running short. They have three touchdowns to make up. Ten minutes left in the third period. David Smith dots the eye. Stan Walmeyer in front of him. They go a slot left. Wes Anderson splits the whole part of your screen. McDonald goes up quickly and he finds a man, Ron Rominger, across the 40 to the 45 and 47 yard line. So, a change in philosophy. Tim Gordon made the stop. Brian set up, had time, and fired this one. Nice grab by Ronnie Rominger. 5'10", 171 pound junior. So first down for the Shockers, just shy of midfield. They go from the same offensive set, slot to the left, split to the right, Wes Anderson. Second man through, David Anderson along the left side, and he is knocked down just shy of the 50. It'll be a pickup of two and a half before Tony Buford knocked him down. We're playing in the third period. Bruce Hurt along with Dick Klein from Skelly Stadium in Tulsa, Oklahoma, along the Kansas Broadcasting System. Very glad to have you along on what is turning into a very cool Saturday afternoon. We're 
Bombing her in the slot right. Counter left. David Smith groomed a run to the 30 and knocked down just shy of a 25-yard line. It looks like we're going to get a few more yards tacked on as Tommy Gordon was late with the hit. He used a little extra pressure face mask, maybe, to call. We'll wait and see. But David Smith fought for the big one. Nice job by the left side of the defensive line, John Pratt and Roger Fultz. Scott Leedy and others on the trap, knocking folks out of the way. 23 yards on the pickup, and they'll move it a little closer on the face mask. Bruce, that play just goes to show you that Wichita State does have the ability to mix up the offense and confuse the defense a little bit. We need to just do a lot more of it. 24 yards on that run by David Smith. David Smith picking up about 10 yards a carry. He has been the sole offensive weapon for Wichita State on the ball on the game. So they'll move it another five off the inadvertent face mask, and it's at the 22. Shockers looking for their first touchdown of the day. Brian McDonald has them slot right. Smith shifts over. They're in the pro set. Rolling to his right, McDonald. Looking quickly and finds Ron Rominger on the right flat. It's good for a pickup of about five. Knocked down on the play by Charles Wright and Timmy Gordon. So Ron Rominger is proving to be a... Nice threat catching the football, as you shall see right here. They just roll it out right. Fine Rominger try to isolate a man-to-man -man in the flat, and that time it worked. Good for a pickup of six officially on the play. It'll bring a second and four. Shockers operating at the 16. Smith along the right side, cutting it back to the 10, to the 5. He's going to go into the end zone for a touchdown. So David Smith pops it in. Break dancing leaves a little to be desired, but nonetheless, the run was sweet, and it's in for the ninth shocker point. We'll see this again on replay, but David does a beautiful job of letting his blockers get out in front of him and just picking the hole where he wants to run. He has been tough with 97 rushing yards, and let's watch David Smith as he really makes the run about as nicely as you can. Reading his block right there off the tight end, Joe Miles. And into the end zone he goes. He just did a nice job delaying there and let his people do the work in front of him, and he squirted into the end zone for the touchdown. Brad Fleeman in for the extra point. With Brad, it's automatic. Now 22 of 22 on the season, and so who knows? With 7.58 left in the third, the Shockers have finally gotten something going on the big, wide shoulders of David Smith. And at present, they trail by a couple touchdowns. Chismar wants them to get one more playoff into the wind. Well, then, unfortunately, he's not going to have too many more ticks of the clock left. Otherwise, he'd get a punt into the wind if they can hold right here. Instead, they're going to switch it over, and then if the shots hold on this play. The Hurricane will punt with the wind. Bruce, if you noticed on that last play, the defensive linemen and linebackers are very slow at getting up. They've been in the ball game a long time, and it's really starting to show right now. Now, really, over the last few weeks, Wichita State has evolved much more as a defensive football team than they have as, a, than they have as an offensive football team. Yes, they have, but this might be a good time down 21 points with only a quarter to go to give that first team a little break. Homecoming here at Tulsa, last home game of the season. You can see the goalposts quivering in that shot right there, an indication of how strong the wind is. Third and five from their own 15, so in the shadow of the goal line. McVeigh will try the option, and a man squirts open. And now you're seeing the tail end of a first down play, the first of the fourth period. A flag on the play as McVeigh was going for Eric Brown in the end zone. Put Normore on the play defensively. McVeigh in in relief of Steve Gage has moved this offense down the field. Looking to throw on the run back across his body. And it's knocked down nicely by Clint Normore. Look at the rushing yards. 453 in the Shockers with the two Smiths in the backfield. So prolific in the weeks past. Not to task today, 97 yards, a testimony. The offensive pass interference, which is a loss of noun against the offense. A First down. Testimony more Second. to 
Tulsa's defense than Wichita State's lack of proficiency offensively, frankly, as Tulsa has really been an impressive defensive football team, but over 550 yards now of total offense, and they could very easily end up with six, 657, who knows, the sky's the limit. McVeigh looking to tack on some more right now, rolls to his left. He's under pressure and is gonna be wrestled down on the play defensively inside by Kirk Allen, Doug Maxwell. Doug Maxwell on the bottom of that heat. Mitch Morris getting off the top. Bruce, this is the kind of ball game that you come into and you expect Tulsa to run up a lot of yardage on you. The biggest disappointment we've seen so far today is the total inability for the Wichita State offense to move the ball. And the defense to come up with the big play against Tulsa. That has really hurt as well. Tulsa has come up with the big play and Wichita State again has not. But that has been really a telltale sign of the entire Wichita State season. McVay looking quickly to pass, but he's not going to get it off. Derek Westfield on the safety blitz knocked him down, and Kirk Allen put him away for good measure. So we're going to see fourth down and a ton of real estate. Fourth and 25 or so, and we are going to see a field goal attempt from Dave Fuse. In an effort to put their 34th point on the board, he'll kick from just about the middle of the field. And I'm telling you, all he's got to do is get it up in the atmosphere right now, and that ball will go through because the wind is blowing at about, got to be blowing about 30 miles an hour down there right now. He'll be kicking the ball 52 yards, but like you said, it's almost a chip shot from where he's at with this wind. It's 0 for 1 at this distance during the season. This one has plenty of distance. And it is no good wide to the left. It would have been good had the direction been correct, but instead David Fuse goes off one for three in field goal attempts thus far. It doesn't hurt Tulsa, though. They're still up by three touchdowns and smelling victory. The way I see it, people used to know about nature, respected it. Then they figured they'd try to make it better. Take beer. Can you imagine why anyone would want to add anything artificial to something that just comes naturally from ingredients like grain, water, barley, hops? <laughs> Neither can Coors. Back to action, David Smith just picked up oh, about a half a step. Take another look. Brian McDonald in. Running on first down, 21 points down, 12.55 remaining. Does it sound like second guessing? And that's also using the same play Wichita State uses about 95% of the time on first down. Now he'll put it up, and he's going for it all, and it falls incomplete. So now you've got third and 10. Jack Owen is the intended receiver. It sailed over his head without consequence. 12.38 remaining. Shocks down by three touchdowns. They're 10 yards away from a first down. Shocks have been disastrous on third down. One for 13 thus far on the ball game. Three to nothing at the end of one period. Tulsa, it's been all Golden Hurricane since then. McDonald back to pass, has time, has a man on the near sideline, Jack Owens for the first down. So a nice job by Jack Owens catching the ball and picking up two or three more, which he needed for the first down. Now let's see what they do on first down here, Dick. You'd like to see perhaps some type of play action or something or other, maybe something to cross up the defense a little bit more as it's getting fairly predictable on first down. I would hate to second guess anybody, but I would probably be willing to bet just on the odds that we're going to see a run off tackle by the second man through. Let's hope I'm wrong. Now they're going from the passing set, but instead they run as Dick Klein prescribed off tackle right. There's always some hope with your offense, and with a runner like David Smith in the, in the backfield, you know that there's always the ability to break that play for a long game. This is not the time necessarily to be trying that. I'll tell you, it's been a track meet for Tulsa. 
David Smith has done his best to pick up the slack for Wichita State. He's got about 98 yards rushing on the day. He's going to go over 100 with this one across the 50 to about the 47-yard line. But the Shocks continue to run the football as the clock runs down to 11.45, and it'll be a, a third down situation, third and about five for the Shockers. You know, Bruce, we do not know what happened in the uh, first half uh, as far as the, the passing game, and when the quarterback was knocked out, did he get hurt? I don't know if that's why he's not throwing the ball or not. If that's the case, I'd say let's get the second-team quarterback in there, let Cruz throw the ball. McDonald will throw this time, or Willie. Finally gets it off to save his life, and David Smith got a hand on it. Right in front of Tony Buford, he knocked him down, and so we were going to see David Armagost once again. McDonald not with a lot of time this time, and just good athletic effort to even get the football away as he was being bared down on quickly by number 83, Anthony Brown, the nose guard. So Armagost to kick, and he's had a pretty good day, but his average is going to be hurt by this kick as he is kicking in to gale force wins. Pretty good under the circumstances. Charles Wright takes it on the run, and he is hit hard by Joe Miles at the 15-yard line. So Armagost with a pretty good kick into the wind. David should have that punt down by now after playing ball at Wichita State for a while. Look at the hit that you're going to see right here coming up by Joe Miles, the tight end. Boom. Right there. 36-yard punt. Fine effort by Armagost. Injured player on the field. Looks like Kenny Stonebreaker. Reserve defensive back. Senior. Appears to have a problem with his hand or fingers. Junior college transfer out of Ellsworth, Kansas. So Tulsa will take over. At the end of the third period, keep this in mind. They had Johnson with 117 yards rushing, Ellison with 101. Eric Brown on five reverses had 82 yards. You don't think that play's been big for him today. And Lee has 95 yards rushing. This does not even illustrate what Steve Gage has done running the football. Wow. Awful lot of offensive weapons. So Tulsa on offense yet again. This time they'll go from two tight ends. Man in motion is Eric Brown. McVay still in at quarterback. Gives the first man through. It's Kenny Lee breaking it up for good yardage again, close to the first down, and indeed they'll give it to him out across the 25. A good job by the offensive line of Tulsa. I'm sure that those Wichita State football players that are in there right now are really tired. The defense has been on the field giving up a lot of yardage all day long. 10.49 and counting down. Staying with the two tight end set, the pitch to Kenny Lee. Kirk Allen doing a nice job before Jimmy Storm comes over to finish him up along with Mitchell Morris, who's played a pretty good ball game inside today. Hasn't played a lot during the season. A fifth-year senior, 6'4", 251, Mitchell Morris. And there is the future of Tulsa. Marcus McVay, freshman quarterback, led his club to the Oklahoma State Championship, high school championship here last year in the 5A division, which is akin to 6A in Kansas. McVay on the play action will throw. Now he's flushed from the pocket, staying behind the line of scrimmage, and he'll just take his lumps and get knocked out of bounds by Sean Jackson. Bruce, we mentioned this at the start of the telecast, but we have to go back again and say that Tulsa has just done an excellent job in building their program the last several years. Yeah, they really have, Dick, and I'll tell you, they have absolutely manhandled Wichita State today. The Shockers have really not thrown a lot at them offensively, and whatever they have thrown at them, Tulsa has been able to handle without problem, and of course, offensively, well, they've been a juggernaut. McVay is going to go up long. He's got a man, Eric Brown, with the reception. He was man-to-man -man on Derek Ritchie. And it's good for another first down. Across the 50 and the 45 to the 44-yard line as Eric Brown makes the grab. And this kid is only a freshman, 6'3", 180 pounds. Let's watch him reel in this pass from Marcus McVeigh. 
33 yards on the reception. Well, I'll tell you, this kid's got some all-purpose yards today, running the football, catching it on his returns. He has been tremendous. 87 yards receiving the football. That last play showed you the ability that McVay has to scramble. Two tight ends now. Man coming back in motion is Harrison. McVay will keep it on the ground this time, and the shocks will stop him. Mitchell Morris turned the play up, and Mark Duckins was there with the follow and knocked him down on first down. He'll bring a second and ten. Shocks next week come back home. It'll look sweet after this one, I'll tell you, to take on Illinois State. That's their last realistic chance to win a football game on the season as the last one, frankly, against Arizona State is going to be a tough one, to say the least. Two tight ends again as Tulsa staying in the running formation. Harrison back in motion behind the quarterback, McVay. He brings it down this side, cuts it up inside the 40 to the 39 before he's whistled down. It'll bring a third down play. Mitch Morris again in on the stop. He's been active in the inside. Regardless of the outcome of next week's game, it's got a, it's just an awful tough situation for both the coaching staff and the players to be faced with a situation like Arizona State. You get down there after coming off a bad season, knowing what they have to offer, and you just want to try to come out of the game not worrying about next year, but just making a good appearance. And that's what the Shockers will have to do. And there's a great defensive play right there. Kirk Allen met the first man through for virtually no gain. Maybe they'll give him one. And we are going to see a Tulsa punt. That has been rare. The second this afternoon. Anthony Hardy will be deep to receive, but it's doubtful that he's going to have a chance to receive this one. Snap, and it's a fake. Wouldn't you know it? And they're going to pick up the first down and more to the 23-yard line on the play. Bernard Bolabi, a reserve running back, in on the kick team and Wichita State's weakness on that again shown. Remember Toledo? It was so painful. Two key first downs really took him out of the game. And here Tulsa follows suit and picks one up to about the 22-yard line. Specialty teams, again, have played a big part in this game. I'll tell you, you watch Wichita State and you can't help but think that they're just a, a few very key players away from being, from turning to a corner in this program as Derek Ellison bust inside the 10. For Kirk Allen and Randall Cooper combined on the stop. There are some very glaring weaknesses in this Wichita State program. One of them is special teams. They really have lacked any consistency through the entire season on special teams, as you see Ellison rushing for more yardage. And of course, they have been suspect in the defensive backfield, in particular the cornerback position. They have shown good improvement defensing against the run, although today would not be a good indication of that. McVay will keep inside the five where Jim Storm wrestles him down. Bruce, it would take a team a lot stronger right now than Wichita State to look good against the run. This Tulsa ball team just has the option down pat. Yeah, they do so, and they have so many weapons doing it, and that's really the key. You've got five or six or seven kids that can just flat turn it up and burn you. Just when you think you have them figured out, here they come back with the counter or the reverse and just go all the way. Wichita State is certainly not short on heart. Just on talent. And McVay puts it into the end zone and Tulsa has 37 on the board with 649 remaining in the ball game. And I'm telling you, they are piling up the yards against this Wichita State defense. Last year, remember, 620-some. I would imagine they're well over that to this point in time in the ballgame. You're going to see this kid for the next few years, Marcus McVay. Boy, and I'll tell you, for a 165-pound youngster, he just powered that ball in from the two-yard line. Clint Normore got up real slow on that, and it's time to get that man out of the ballgame. David Fuse will tack on the 38th point. 
given the opportunity. And Tulsa is on the verge of winning their sixth ball game of the season against a very impressive schedule. Oklahoma State, Arkansas, Houston. They will play Miami of Florida to end the season. Miami, of course, winning today 41 to 23 after trailing in the ball game 23 to 20 as late as the third period. But Vinny Testavardi. Fighting the elements in Tulsa. It is. Temperature has to have dropped about 15 degrees from kickoff, I would say. Well, it's dropped at least 15 degrees, and I don't know what the wind is down on the field. But if you see the last shot we had of the cheerleaders, it's really blowing well down there. Well, what about Wichita State? What do you come away with from a ball game like this against Florida State? It was almost expected, but you come down to Tulsa thinking you've got to be competitive, and whether they have been or not, I guess, is a subject to debate. Well, you come down to this ball game with great expectations. You know you're capable of playing this game, and it just doesn't come off. So, 38 to 10. We'll be back. The damage, 85 yards and 11 plays. It took them a little over four minutes. Marcus McVeigh finally put it in. Oklahoma only 27 to nothing over KU at the end of three. That's a moral victory for the Jayhawks. And Nebraska at Kansas State, 24 to nothing. That ball goes through the end zone. Wichita in the fourth period as Wichita State launches the ball sail through the end zone on the kickoff, and they will start it from their own 20. Bruce, following up on the comments that we were in the middle of before we went to break, it's just awfully hard for an offensive and the defensive team right here to go back to Wichita feeling good at all. Uh, they've just been run over all day long. They came down here, I'm sure, expecting to at least be in the ball game. Uh, Wichita State is not is not that bad a team from what we've seen the last couple weeks of improvement. Now they have certainly improved as a football team. But boy, these are with David Cruz in the ball game now as quarterback. These are ball games where you really judge where your program is at because these are ball games that you need to be competitive in and Wichita State has not answered the call thus far. Smiley Elmore in a big 10 yard cut up and good for a first down. So Wichita State again running the football on first down. Down by 28 now. Four touchdowns down in the ball game and David Cruz now working the offense with 641 left in the game. Good to see Cruz in right now. I'd like to see some of the second team offensive line in there. I'd like to see David Cruz air it out a little bit, even against this win. See if he could get some confidence in his passing game a little bit. Instead, they'll run it. Same play as before. Boy, I'll tell you, Smiley Elmore took a shot initially by Tyson Garner. But he squirts through and is close to another first down. So the freshman running hard. Just a good piece of running and some tremendous balance on that play by Smiley. We'll see it again. Smiley from right here in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Ran the ball very nicely, took a hit and kept on going. Took another one and just plowed through. Six minutes counting down. Inside handoff. And it's Eric Gilstrap, so a pair of freshmen. Carrying the football for Ron Chismar's Wichita State Shockers, and I'll tell you, Ron Chismar is a very dedicated man, a man that obviously puts a great deal of heart and effort into this Wichita State football program, but it's got to be frustrating. He came from Arizona State with dreams of building a program from the foundation. It's being built, but ever so slowly. He's about to go to 8 and 23 in his career as Shocker head man. Cruz on the throw, and what a fine job by Wes Anderson along the far sideline, dancing the sideline and keeping the ball in bounds. And David Cruz on the rollout throw to show that he's got a pro arm with that zip. Nice job by Wes Anderson. You know, Wes is called the Smurf by all his friends. Uh, he just did a tremendous job in staying in bounds, and he doesn't have a lot in height to work with on a pass like that. Boy, David Cruz really had some mustard on that pass, and it's. Good across the 40 to the 38 yard line. The shock's moving it. Elmore cutting it to the 30 to the 25 and inside the 25 to the 24 yard line. So second unit squaring off against each other and Wichita State getting the better of it to this point. Wichita State still has their first team offensive line in there. 
Good piece of running by Smiley Omar. Wichita State does not lack a wealth of talent in the backfield. I'll tell you, they've got some good backs and look appear to be very strong at that position for the immediate future. David Smith returning next year along with Gilstrap, Walmeyer, and the rest. Tyson Garner on the stop that time as Elmore tried the right side. Good pickup of seven yards. Did a nice job reading right there out in front of the play was Kevin Robbins. Elmore's carried it four times for 38 yards. David Cruz, the heir apparent to Brian McDonald next year. Facing a second and four, they've driven it to the 19. And this looks to be good for the first down again. Is driving hard across the 15 to the 13 yard line is Eric Gilstrap. It's fun to watch Eric run. He makes, he doesn't hesitate at all just to put his head down and get every inch he can get on the field. Good forward surge by the offensive line. And Gilstrap just rode the wave in there to the 13-yard line. Another first down, Wichita State moving the football. Of course, they're down by four touchdowns late in the contest. This time, Gilstrap is met quickly inside. Stop made by Earl Johnson. As both teams are emptying the benches. Shocks are going to go to three and six on the season, coming home next week to take on Illinois State. It's a 1.30 kickoff, Cessna Stadium. Elmore avoids one tackler and then is knocked down shy of the 10-yard line. It'll be a pickup of about a half a yard. Shocks have picked up five first downs on this drive alone before this possession. They had only eight for the entire game, so that statistic will be a little misleading in the paper tomorrow. This second team defense of Tulsa has just not let down. They're in there to play ball and look good. You have to give credit to the offensive line of Wichita State. They've been in there a long time. There's a lot of heart left in those kids. That has never been questioned. There is heart. Cruz across the middle looking for the six. Anthony Hardy, but broken up on the play the by Roger McCall. Hart can only McCall. carry you so far, though, Dick, and you as a former shocker knows that better than anything. You, know, you guys, of course, were very successful in the early 60s winning Missouri Valley Conference championships, but as we take another look at the incompletion, Hart has nothing to do with execution. It has nothing to do with ability. Don't forget the open houses. Without making any excuses for the Wichita State ball team, that's the last thing I'd do. You have to realize that where they're really weak is up front, both offense and defense. And I know uh, going back to what we played, we played both ways, but we had two or three teams deep. So if you did play 30 minutes of the game, that was a long time. Occasionally you'd go more. Uh, if you look at the teams that we've had on the field, that Wichita State has had on the field, both offensively and defensively, especially in the critical positions, the linebackers, the offensive line, the defensive line, the defensive backs, those poor kids have been in this game the whole day. Uh, emotionally, it's tough to handle because you're getting beat up. Uh, physically, you're, you know, now you're near the end of the season. Your practices may be a little shorter because of bumps and bruises. You're not in the kind of physical conditioning today that you were at the first of the year. And to ask these ball players to play this entire game is asking an awful lot. So yes, Bruce, they have a tremendous heart. And that is to be complimented and perhaps the only thing that will come out of this ball game with as far as Wichita State is concerned because they are looking at the long end of a 38 to 10 score. Cruz from the quick count on fourth down, looking for the end zone, and Ron Rominger has it sail over his head, and so Tulsa will take over. But a nice offensive effort by Wichita State that time. They moved the football, picking up five first downs, and David Cruz, though, walking off the field, dejected, did a nice job moving the Wichita State offense. So we'll see Tulsa one more time with 2.34 left. As McVeigh, Marcus McVeigh trots back onto the field. He scored the last touchdown for the Hurricane. We travel to New Mexico next week to take on the Lobos and then head down to take on Jimmy Johnson and Miami. 
Bain. Knocked down by Kirk Allen, who wrestled the ball away. He's saying he took it before the play was whistled dead, but the officials are going to give him the forward progress. To just outside the 15-yard line. Bruce, much to my surprise, with two minutes and 14 seconds left to go in a ball game, you don't have a chance of winning. Our first team defense is still in there. I would think if it's only for not risking anybody getting hurt, you'd want to have them out and on the sideline, let alone experience for the second team. On the carry is Bernard Corlavi, who picked up a first down earlier on a fake punt. He's not in the ball game at present, but it should be pointed out that Eric Brown, the young freshman 6'3", 180-pound freshman wide receiver, has 204 total purpose yards in this ball game. 82 rushing, 88 receiving, 34 on the kickoff, and what a day he has had, and what a force he is going to be for Don Morton and the Hurricane as their future continues to unwind on third and one. McVeigh testing the left side, and he is going to be marked down shy of the first down. And so Tulsa will kick it away, but it's all over for the shouting here in Tulsa. 38 to 10 with a minute seven left, and the Shockers will get it back. Anthony Hardy deep to receive the punt. Reminder, two weeks from tonight, Wichita State finishes up the season against the Sun Devils of Arizona State University, a team with still harboring hopes of a national championship going into tonight's ball game with Washington at 6-0-1 on the season. Here's the boot. Anthony Hardy backtracking to the 30, fumbles it, picks it up, sea of blue, washes him under at the 31-yard line, and that's where the shots will start it off for the final drive of the ball game. 50-yard boot. Ron Chismar, with only 37 seconds left to go, has finally put the second team line in. And there are some big horses in that second team line. You can look down the line, number 78, Chris Nielsen. I believe Chris is about 6'6", 280. Even though he's listed at less than that, I know him well. He's at least 280. Brian Schertz, Scott Hughes, John Norling, and David Feather lining up for the shocks right now, getting a chance to show their stuff. Rolling to his left. David Cruz, and is finally clipped out of bounds at just shy of the 35. It'll stop the clock. I want to take this opportunity to thank Don King, our statistician this afternoon, for a fine job of keeping us up to date on the numbers, painful as they are for Wichita State. Scott Shoemaker is our spotter here today. He of the Sports Information Office at Wichita State. And what a fine guy he really is. <laughs> you know, Bruce, this is only the second game I've ever had the opportunity to do, but the professionalism I've been surrounded by here in the booth has just made it very easy. It's really appreciated. And the pictures provided by our buddies from Telepredictions Unlimited out of Tulsa. What a fine job they always do as timeout is on the field. We've worked with them over the last couple of years doing Wichita State football and baseball and look forward to a Continuing relationship with our friends from Tulsa. They have provided the fine pictures of frustration for Wichita State today as Ron Chismar and David Cruz talk it over in front of what has become a rather desolate Skelly Stadium. Started off with a fairly decent homecoming crowd today, but it, of course, as the blowout has shown itself for what it is, the fans have headed off to warmer places 38 to 10 the score here what will it be two weeks hence Wichita State and Arizona State we do know it'll be a little warmer down there David Cruz and what should be the last play of the ball game dropping back to pass well check that if it's incomplete now if it's completed picked up and caught by Steve Genovan and that is his first reception as a Wichita State shocker. There's that five arm eight, of Davids again. 5'8", 162 pound freshman, excuse me, Dick, from Emporia, Kansas. And you're right, he, I'm telling you, the kid can, can lay it out. He can throw the football. 23 yard pass.
So Ron Chismar talking it over with the contingent along the far sideline. They'll go back to work for Illinois State next week, a game that, frankly, they'll be favored in and a game that they should win. It'll be interesting to see what Coach has to say on the coaches show tomorrow night. Even though Wichita State will be favored next week, that will be an awfully hard game for this team to get up for. You bet it will. Very tough to come back. This has obviously been a very physical game and mentally a very draining game for Wichita State, who really has just been overwhelmed from the start. Actually played a fairly competitive first quarter, but since then it's it's been an onslaught of dramatic proportions. 22 seconds left, and Cruz is going to put it up, rolling to his right. Has a man in the flat, instead will run it. At the 40, and he's going to go out of bounds at about, oh, the 35-yard line. Dave Cruz keeps the right side, driven out of bounds by 23, Edward Epps. It'll be a long ride back to Wichita tonight, though, for these young men. David Cruz, though, getting some very sorely needed experience, as he will, barring junior college transfer, be the quarterback that leads the Shocker program over the next couple of years. Second and short. Putting it up is Cruz. Flush from the pocket, rolling right. And just shy of the first down. And they did not get a good mark on the play at all by the officials. Miley Elmar was knocked down, but it's all over. So Ron Chismar bites the bullet. Heads across the field to shake it up with Don Morton, and he is looking now at a three and six mark on the season as Wichita State has come up shy against a very seasoned and a very good Tulsa football team. Final score 38 to 10. Jack and I will be back to wrap her up.